Welcome back race fans. Today we're going to talk about tires. Tires have come a long way in the HO world since the 60s. Um, some of you guys that are old enough to remember um, you know, factory tires were crud. You know, people came up with slip-ons. You ground your own sponge. You glued up the track. You did all sorts of interesting things. But we don't have to do that anymore. The technology has helped us out in uh, many different ways. Um, first, I want to talk about silicon sponge tires. These cars right here in the middle are performance cars and they have silicon sponge tires. And for you that don't know, what that is is a rim that um, has a piece of foam rubber glued on it and you control the stiffness of the tire by the durometer of the foam rubber. The craftsman puts it on a lathe, cuts it down to size, and then he coats it with um, silicon sponge. Generally on these tires a somewhat rounded or what I call a bicycle tire profile works better than a really flat cut because as the cars you know move through a corner they will roll ever so slightly and that radius edge helps them to handle. Um, they're very good um, they're somewhat costly if uh, you're not used to purchasing them they require some special tools to use um, you have a puller and a press um, here's an example of a basic puller and then you have a press um, very similar to this you can have a situation where you have a press such as this one here from scale engineering and then you can have a series of sized collets that fit into the press in order to capture the tire perfectly so when you press this thing on it doesn't screw the uh, inside of the hub up because a lot of times the axle will dig into the inside of the of the hub if it's not pressed on squarely and ruin the tire. Uh, the, the single really the biggest problem with uh, with the tires is they do wear out just like any regular tire. This particular slot tech chassis I use for trimming and pinning Lexan bodies uh, I no longer race it, uh, but you can see that the uh, um, sponge kind of gets fuzzy after, a, or the silicon gets kind of fuzzy after a point in time and, and comes off and the tire no longer grips. You just got to take them off, throw them away, and get a new pair. They are exceedingly good in high performance applications where you can size the tires to uh, one one thousandths ride height. Uh, they do work real good. You can get them in a variety of compounds, uh, stiffnesses of foam. These two particular tires here, uh, these are, I believe, uh, produced by Tom Shepard, both of these sets. Um, basic construction is the same. The type of foam is different and the coating is different on these two for different performance applications. But once you get it dialed in, they work fantastic. Um, but the point of the video is not to talk about these cars here in those kinds of tires. Those are professional racing items and those guys have it all figured out. So we're going to deal with slip-ons, which is where most of the market is. Uh, they're easy to work with and you can get them in a variety of sizes. Historically, factory cars, and this one here is a lifelike, um, come with relatively cheap wide tires. It's just the way slot cars have always been. They're hard, they they work to a point car goes down the road or down the track but they um, they're not designed well and the durometers are generally the wrong uh, thing for most applications that's just been my my experience you can take that basic car and put on a set of double flanged rims and narrow tires, there's a the double flange rim, and get a completely different handling car. In general, the higher the magnetic downforce, the firmer the tire needs to be, and being skinnier helps. If you think this problem through, our cars do not have a differential. So when that car gets in a turn, especially like a six inch radius, 
one tire wants to let go or skittle for that thing to get around. Um, and the wider the tire is, the worse that problem is. So when you have a thinner tire that has radius edges, it makes that transition less difficult for the car. The car actually handles better. Um, generally, historically, slip-ons came in a wide width to fit a Tyco rim, but with the more current high-performance applications, you have narrower, either narrow single flange rims, like that's on this particular Tyco, or the double flange rims, which I've shown you here. The width varies a little bit, but about 0200 wide generally fits. Uh, the Viper product line has a tire called a PST, and I have it on a Tyco rim here just to show you the difference, how much narrower it is. And then on this particular rim, you have a standard super tire, and then there is a new product out from super tires that's 200 wide. So you can see that both the Viper PST and the new Super Tire 200 are designed for your more modern applications. So you can take a basic lifelike, put in stronger traction magnets, put on the better double flanged hubs, get the right size super tires, and you can have a pretty fast car for not much money. This particular car is a wizard that we fixed up. It's got a 2.9 ohm hot stock armature, all level 10 magnets, put a 723 gear set in it, and we have Viper PSTs on it with single flanged hubs. And this car handles exceedingly well with these tires. Uh, there is another product out that Super Tires has uh, for the Tyco, for the standard Tyco hubs. It's their urethane line, and it's an interesting product, works very well. It's built on the wide convention, the standard wide convention that uh, you're familiar with on. You can see there. But the tire has a certain amount of draft to it. It's not perfectly flat. It has a little bit of a draft. It's a little bit larger on the inside than it is on the outside. So when the car gets in a corner, it can roll a little bit, but the whole tire doesn't load up and it actually handles very well. So this we're very pleased with this. Now you can take the tires, any of the wide tires, and you can cut them down. And the way that I do that is I have a battery powered Dremel with an adjustable chuck. I take an axle, I put a hub on it, make sure it's seated perfectly. And if I need to cut them down, I'll put the tire generally on backwards with the outside rim or the outside edge facing that way. I'll get an X-Acto knife that's got a very sharp blade. I'll put a drop of oil on the blade right in here and then as this tire is spinning I will lower that blade right into the tire and cut it to width. Um, for a lot of years that's what we had to do before Viper introduced the PST and Super Tires introduced the 200 wide product. So these two things are nearly net size for your more modern uh, narrow single flange and double flange rims. Now that doesn't mean these tires will work on everybody else's double or single flange narrow rims, but they'll be really, really close. And if it is off a little bit, um, if you get a rim that's really, really narrow, you can still take them and use this method to where you uh, spin the tire with an oiled X-Acto knife and trim just a little bit off to get your width correct. On average, the uh, slip-on tire product works very good with the current compression molded magnets that are being used a lot. The level 4 packages work good with the PSTs and the Super Tire A. Uh, once you start increasing in magnetic downforce, uh, where you have um, higher downforce products like level 10, 
you have to go from uh, the super t or the uh, Viper PST up into the Super Tire B compound. Currently, Super Tires does not offer B in the narrow, so you have to get the tire. It'll come like this, and then you have to cut it down. Um, please don't ask me to do all that work for you. I'm, I'm not doing that, so don't even ask. Um, these these methods are quite simple. Um, invest a little bit in the tools. The battery-powered Dremels aren't much money. The adjustable chuck is an aftermarket item that Dremel sells. In fact, if you get this, it's good for all kinds of uses, not just this here. Um, but this is a very simple way to set it up. Pro racers have been doing things similar to this for a number of years. It's not a new idea. Um, so if you have any questions, you can email me. The uh, contact information is there on the website. But uh, this is just a quick rundown on the basics of slip-on tires. All right, guys, enjoy it. All right, welcome back, race fans. Today we're going to go to magnet school. There's a lot of confusion, I think, in the marketplace with racers wanting to know what kind of magnets to put in their car, and there's all these big numbers that are thrown out there. Level this, level that. Um, warp speed, who knows what. Um, I may be guilty of a lot of that confusion, but maybe I can kind of explain a little bit in general what happens with magnets in cars. Generally, the larger the number the magnet the stronger it is. That does not mean that a level 4 magnet does less work than a level 52 magnet that should be exceedingly strong. Um, it can to a point but what you have to realize is that the shape of the magnet and the mass of the magnet have everything to do with how much downforce that car applies to the rail and the track. So once you understand that, then the problem is less fuzzy. If I can get my gauss meter count cranked up here, and I'll show you that. Here we have a common lifelike car. And wow, that traction magnet and that lifelike car measures 4,200 gauss. All right, now this is a little spin doctor meter. It's probably one of the best little meters I've come across. So you think that's, I mean, that's a huge number, man. 4,200. And we'll go over to a common level 10 car. This is a wizard with um, level 10 magnets in it. And it's only coming up at about 2,400 right there. So you would think on the face of it that this car, being that it shows about half the Gauss measurement on the surface as this stock lifelike car, that this car is going to stick far better than the Wizard. That's not the case because we have magnets that are probably every bit of five times smaller than the Wizard magnets. This magnet here, because of its size and its shape, will produce a very large and very wide um, uh, Gauss emanation out of it. Where this here is a very small and very focused um, Gauss projection. And a lot of guys that have raced the lifelike T-cars, they'll tell you the cars you really be pushing them around the track and then for no apparent reason they just fly off. Well, you get around the corner or something that car goes around the corner and skittles off the back rail just a little bit, loses magnetic attraction and it flops off. Full-size magnets like this or what's in a Tyco, you have a wider window, and that won't happen. Um, and we'll come back and we'll show some uh, lift tests to kind of demonstrate these two things. Um, take some, turn my meter back on. Now in the level 52s, these are about level 30s in the stock car. If you put level 52s in it, Okay, then we get up to 4,800 Gauss in that one, and 
about 4,600 gauss in that one. Here's another one that's probably had the 52s put in it. No, nope, this one's standard. This is, uh, nope, this one has got the 52s. That's up to 5,000 gauss. But here again, you don't have a lot of mass, so the car only does so much work. Here we have a hopped up Tyco that has level 8 traction magnets in it and level 4 motor magnets. And the traction magnets are putting out about 2,500 gauss. This particular one, same way, level 8, about 2,500 gauss. Go back to the wizard, level 10. Now the interesting thing, level 8 product shows in the Tyco 2500. Level 10, which should be stronger, in a wizard is 22 to 2300. All right, that has to do with the shape. The Tyco has a very square shape and you get a lot of gauss lines that emanate off the edge of the magnet. So the fact that it has a small footprint tends to focus that energy a lot more than one that's more open that spreads it out. So hopefully that will alleviate some of the fog in terms of magnets. What you can say about the level of a magnet is it should only be applied to any specific brand of car. Just because a Tomy AFX Mega G has a level 30 in it doesn't mean it's going to do more work than a Viper with a level 4. There's a whole lot of things that go on to make cars handle and it's not just magnets. And to kind of wrap the discussion up, the stronger the magnets that you put in your cars, the more stress it puts on the rest of the system. The standard lifelike car that has the level 30s you can buy a set of super tires and stick on there and lower the car down and get them to handle pretty good. But if you really want to get a lot more performance out of it and you put the level 52s in, you're going to need to upgrade the gears and put on better rear tires so these magnets can have a chance to work and you can get all the goody out of them that you can. Um, it's not just one thing. Uh, this particular car I've put in a slot tech rear gear set and that tends to help it quite a bit in terms of robustness because the original um, Tyco crown gears are a little soft. They can get bent up pretty easy in a crash if you don't have a hard body on them. Alright, so we will take a break and we will come back and try to do some lift tests. Okay, we have our lift test arrangement set up and it's really not very complicated. It's actually quite easy. And I know some of the pro guys will have some criticism about it because it's not complicated, but you know, sometimes simple is better. And it approximate gives it gives a way to approximate what you have here. All right, so we start off with a standard lifelike car, level 30 factory mag factory traction magnets and large hard rear tires. All right, here we have our hopped up Lifelike T with level 52s and Viper PSTs. And you know, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to be able to tell this car's got a lot more sticky than this car. But we have to have a way to quantify that. So get our little meter here, and it's nothing but a gram gauge with a telltale indicator. As you can see, that whatever the needle does, it gives you a telltale indicator. So We'll put that back here, pop it up, and it shows about 70, about 70 grams of pressure to break it off the track. All right, let's go with our hopped up car. Wow. All the way up there to about 190. Okay, that's, that's a big difference. Now, Within any one car, you could build, say, 10 of these and put them on the track and measure this repeatedly and be able to figure out which car has the most downforce. And that doesn't mean it's going to stick the best because there's other things that come into play. 
in just how the chassis reacts on the track or whatever, but it's a way to quantify certain certain things. All right here we have an all level 10 wizard car, and you know we had talked about that. Uh, the shape of the magnet has a lot to do with how much work it does. And then this particular Viper car is all level 10 as well. And since I make both these magnets, I can assure you that the formula for each one of those is identical. The only difference is the shape. So on the wizard, that level 10 had 220. 220. We'll go to the Viper. And it actually came up a few points more, about 235. And you could repeat these tests to come up with an average. But what you can say about them is although the material in both of these magnets is identical, the shape of the Viper magnet and its relative mass creates in a static lift test more downforce than the wizard design. That doesn't mean this car is going to be faster. It just simply says that in a static mode it has more downforce. And if you don't select your tires properly or whatever, Having a lot of downforce with the wrong tires can actually be worse for you than a well set up car with less downforce and better tires. So setup is everything. But that just lets you know um, that uh, uh, you can have level 10 have as much grip as nearly as really small level 52s. Let's take that one more time. At 280, So there's a lot less. So in this particular demonstration, level 52, small level 52s, don't produce as much downforce as larger mass level 10. So hopefully this demonstrates that you know the mass and the shape of the magnet have a lot to do with how much actual work they do in a car to create downforce. Thank you.